What is up, Pats Nation? It's Patriots Global back here with another video, and in this one, I'm bringing back my Winners and Losers series for a week to talk about the Patriots' disappointing loss here to the Houston Texans as they lost 28-22. to New England now sits at 10-2 and on the season and will be playing at home next week to host the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, obviously, a loss sucks, but... I do want to um, just, just point out for a second that if anybody watched my video that I made before the season started on my predictions for the season, I'm currently still undefeated. <laughs> I had the Patriots losing two games this season, and that was the Ravens and the Texans, and so many of you guys blasted me. Um, so I don't know if Bill Belichick or the NFL watched that video and went, okay, let's just have this kid be right. He's working hard. Let, let's give him some props here. But surprisingly enough, I'm still undefeated on my record prediction. And I'll admit it myself, I did not see that coming. Now my first loser on this list is going to be quarterback Tom Brady. And before you comment in the section, in the comment section saying, Dude, are you stupid? It's not Tom Brady's fault, man. It's the receivers. It's the play calling. It's the offensive line. Yeah, you're right about that. But in this game, Tom Brady also had a part in this. Brady finished this game going 24 for 47 for 326 yards, three touchdowns, and an interception. Brady threw some very, very questionable balls. Now, there were times where it was the receiver's fault. Tom Brady would try to signal to guys like Jacoby Myers to go more down the field instead of cutting back, and there obviously was not good enough communication there. But there were times Tom Brady would also be throwing the ball way too high. He'd be throwing the ball an extra 10 yards down the field. And really, by the end of the first quarter, it already looked like Tom Brady had just given up. There were also times that Brady would hold on to the ball for way too long. Sometimes it's as easy as just trying to get the ball out a little bit quicker and get a quick dump off out there. It's better than gaining one or two yards than it is just sitting back there and then launching the ball 50 yards down the field to get a possible interception. Now to go along with that, Tom Brady might have only actually thrown one interception, but there were an extra three or four times where Brady almost threw another interception. Luckily enough for him though, this was either called back, or the, res or the defenders, I should say, ended up dropping the ball. So although most of this does come to the lack of of dependable receivers partial of partial parts I should say of this do fall back on Tom Brady my next loser on this list is going to be offensive coordinator Josh McDaniels guys in my videos both on here on YouTube and over on Sportscaster I've talked a lot about how predictable the New England Patriots offense has been, and if they want to really spice things up, they want to get more dynamic, they want more explosive plays, and they want to start moving the chains more, they need to start being less predictable, and Josh McDaniels apparently did not watch my video yet. The Patriots finally decided, or I shouldn't say decided, they got lucky enough to finally get an established run game early on. Guys like Sonny Michelle and James White started having really good games but sadly, Josh McDaniels did not stick with it. Really, after the success within the first quarter, we didn't see the, them going to Sony Michelle as much. In fact, really, after Sony Michelle's success, we didn't see him back on the field that much at all. And look, when I said you guys need to become less predictable, I didn't mean take away the one thing that is working for you offensively. There was also a point in this game where the Patriots were going for two on a two-point conversion, but Brady did not like to seem to love the idea of the play call that was given. He was going back and forth. The ball was not being snapped. The Patriots got a delay of game penalty, which put them back an extra five yards. They ended up not even going for two, kicking the field goal then, which was missed. And a lot of people are going to say, well, they don't have the talent on the offense to be able to do things that Josh McDaniels wants to. It's not his fault. You got to shut up, Patriots Global. And look, I'm sure that things have not planned out the way that Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, and Josh McDaniels were all originally planning on. 
but this is a very talented offense. You have a guy like Mohamed Sanu who has an arm as an actual quarterback, and you've done nothing with him. You just finally started to get James White back into the game, which seems to be the only way you're finding success at this point offensively. All in all, going forward, the Patriots need to come up with way better play calling offensively because what I'm seeing is not dynamic at all. Now let's switch up the tempo here a little bit and give us a winner here. This one is going to be the guy I just talked about, and that's James White. Okay, James White is such a reliable, he's just a wizard of a target here for the Patriots offense, and they have not used him at all this season, and that has been a big issue for them and the struggles that they are having. They finally decided to get him more into the game plan, and of course, the Texans saw this coming, which was a very smart move by them. They decided to actually put a cornerback on James White out of the backfield rather than a linebacker because they know that James White is more of a receiving threat. He's more of a secret wide receiver with the running back label on him. This seemed to work at times for the Houston Texans, but ultimately, they did not shut James White down at all, and by the end of the game, James White was the Patriots offense, and he's the reason that this game was even as close as it was. In fact, he's the reason that points went even on that board. He was flashy in every aspect of the game. He was the best running back, and he was the best receiver. He had 14 carries for 79 yards and led this offense on his back. He was the one moving the chains, and I don't remember who it was in my comments that commented this the other week, saying that James White is a terrible running back, but when you have 14 carries for 79 yards and look as a shifty as James White did, that is not a bad running back at all. And then, of course, James White, being James White, caught eight passes. Okay, eight passes for 98 yards and two touchdowns. That is over 10 yards in average per reception. I love that the Patriots are finally deciding to get James White more involved with this offense, and you can see just how much that he affects the team. You can see it on the field. You can see it with the stats, and I hope that they continue to do this going forward because at this point, this is going to be one of the best ways that they're going to be able to find an effective offense. Now, my next winner here is going to be the other running back of the game, and that is going to be Sony Michelle. Now, Michelle was not as flashy as James White, but he really started to prove that he is this running back that the Patriots coaches and more specifically Bill Belichick have really raved on about ever since drafting him. Sadly, we have not been able to see much of the Sonny Michel we all know and love because of the struggles he's having, but more specifically because of the blocking issues that the Patriots are having here. But tonight, while of course Josh McDaniels was actually using him, he was a guy who was running with excellent running back vision, was running with really good elusiveness and power to him. And ultimately, he was a guy that was keeping the chains moving. On the Patriots' first offensive drive, he was looking really sharp. The whole offense was actually looking really sharp. And again, that goes back to having a dynamic running game that they can plug in to help every aspect of the team. He ended up only finishing the night with a little of 10 carries, but for 45 yards. My next loser here is going to be cornerback Jonathan Jones, which really sucks because Jonathan Jones has had such a great season. He's actually rated as one of the best corners in the league and is currently the second best corner on the Patriots team. But he proved that the absence of veteran cornerback Jason McCourty is really hurting this team that a lot of people are giving it credit for. Now, Jones didn't do all bad, okay? There were times where he would make good plays, you know, pass broken up, preventing touchdowns, but he would make every good play result next with a bad play. There was a point where he broke up a touchdown from Deshaun Watson to Kenny Stills, but then on the next play, he gave up the touchdown anyway, so it really didn't matter much. Then, not to mention the fact that he also committed a holding penalty come the second half of the game. Currently, the exact stats are of his coverage are not out yet. They'll probably be out early tomorrow. But he was getting beat a lot downfield. And for a guy with his type of motor and the way that we've seen him play, especially this season, it's something I was not expecting. He was struggling a lot this past Sunday to the point where I was like, you know what, if he keeps struggling, they need to get some help over the top for him. 
And on a guy like Kenny Stills, not exactly someone you would expect to have to put double team on. Hopefully, Jones is able to get it back together. Hopefully, his confidence was not shaken too much because we will be playing again the Kansas City Chiefs next week where his job, if we're going to look at history, is most likely going to be covering Tyreek Hill. And next up here for my losers is going to be the Patriots linebackers. Now, there were times that this outstanding athletic group of linebackers were able to go out there and make plays, but they were a big reason why this pass coverage, especially in the middle of the field, was not looking sharp at all. Deshaun Watson was able to move around the pocket. He was able to get the ball down the field. He was able to be picking up first down, but more specifically, each time he was able to pick up very decent yardage to the point where it was not hard for him to keep the chains moving and getting first downs because he was getting decent advantages each time. Now, I don't think that this is really an issue with the Patriots. I really think that a big issue is illness, okay? Dante Hightower coming into this game, I don't know if anybody else saw him, but he did not look good. He had sunglasses on. He was all bulked up with sweatshirts, hood over his face. You could tell he still was not feeling good. And even despite looking like that, he was one of the better players here compared to the Patriots linebackers. Guys like Alandon Roberts were also asked to go in there in coverage, which if you know Alandon Roberts, you know the type of linebacker he is. That is not his cup of tea at all. In fact, Alandon Roberts in coverage scares me a lot because he's more of a ground pound stop the run type of linebacker. There was a point, though, where he also committed a holding penalty in the red zone, which resulted in a first down for the Texans. To go along with that, at least two of the Texans' touchdowns, the first two touchdowns they had actually came in coverage from the linebackers. You had Dante Hightower, Kyle Van Noy, and Jamie Collins all with the illness this past week. Kyle Van Noy obviously was put on that list very late, so obviously I don't think this is anything to worry about. I just don't think that they were performing up to par because they were not feeling up to par. And my last winner here has to be my guy, Julian Edelman, the Patriots' best receiver, and of course, really one of the, uh, and only pieces, I should say, to the Patriots' offense. He was getting a lot of attention from this Texans' defense. He was getting double-teamed. He was getting banged up at the line of scrimmage. They were easily and visibly trying to just take Julian Julian, Julian Edelman out of the game most compared to any other player offensively, and yet he still finished this game with six receptions for 106 yards with a long reception of 44 yards, one touchdown, averaging 17.7 yards a catch. And that was with them slowing him down. Now, there was a point where he actually performed offensive pass interference, which really uh, did not help the Patriots there at that time, but Regard that for a second, look at his stats, and without his play, New England clearly struggles at moving the ball. But that's going to be it for this one. Pretty tough loss here for the Patriots against the Houston Texans, obviously losing home field advantage, but we will be talking about that in the next video. What are your guys' thoughts on the loss, and who are your winners and losers of this game? Let me know in the comments below, and also make sure you guys like and subscribe if you have not already. Check out my other social medias, and I'll catch you guys in another video. If you're a sports fan, make sure you go check out Sportscaster for all of your sports needs. Whether you're a football fan, basketball fan, or baseball fan, this app is the perfect way to get news for your team and is an app I personally use myself in case any of you guys want to check out my pregame, halftime, or postgame streams. I'll leave a link in the description below.